Okay, this video is just finishing up on demonstrating and evidencing the Sky Sports F1 TV Red Bull narrative, um, the axis of power within Formula One from the Silverstone Grand Prix in 2021. Now, if anybody watched the Grand Prix yesterday, the 2024 Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, if you've watched the Sky Sports coverage of it, or if you've watched the Channel 4 coverage of it here in the UK, um, I've never encountered a sport whereby the way it's presented is just contradiction after contradiction after contradiction. Lie after lie after lie. They'll say one thing, and then later in the race they'll say the exact opposite, and expect people to believe that one of them things that they've said holds true. Or both. Coulthard yesterday on Channel 4. Some of the things he was saying. They were the exact opposite of each other. And you're saying well which one's which then? It's, it's, it's obscene. It's obscene. It's a shit show. The whole thing is a hype job. It's full of shit. And it seems designed to create controversy. Create conflict get fans arguing with each other by lying to them, giving them disinformation, okay, making each uh, war in faction believe something different to each other for them to conflict over. Now, that's fucked up. That is properly fucked up. But that seems to be being done by design by this so-called sport. That is how contrived it is. It is filthy. Absolutely filthy. Now, Silverstone 2021, as I've demonstrated in the other videos, you've got the vilification of Sir Lewis Hamilton. You've got Sky Sports and F1 TV both offering a platform to the likes of Christian Horner, Jonathan Wheatley, Helmut Marco from Red Bull to state that Lewis Hamilton was reckless. Um, Cops Corner is a place where you don't put a wheel up the inside. Lewis Hamilton should get a one uh, race suspension for this. All these sorts of things to vilify a competitor in a sport. Wrongly identify him because he wasn't at fault. Turn people against him. Incite hatred of which you know it is racial hatred. And nothing gets done. The show moves on. The conflict occurs. The social media toxicity, the online hate just festers and the show moves on. They put up their little banner, hate won't win. They'll put up their little hashtag against online abuse. These fuckers create it. They purposefully create it. They purposefully create the conflict. And then they gaslight you to pretend, oh, yeah, we're going to do something about this. We care. We care about this. You don't care about anything. The only thing you care about is what your share price is. That's the only thing you care about. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to take you through some of the commentary from the last 20 odd laps of Silverstone 2021. Once again, further evidencing either the complete uh, contradictions that they've said or the hatred towards Lewis Hamilton in his vilification of him, okay? And even if it's not that, it's still inciting the Max fans with the notion of the number of times they mention, oh, Max is now in hospital, we hope he's okay, we hope he's, you know, not going to be concussed. If this if this was part of a, a triple header, then this could really be a problem. You know, all of these things where we've just seen the guy get out of the car, okay, walk away, wave to the crowd, and walk himself into the back of an ambulance. Okay? You can see, yeah, the guy's a bit shaken up. But man up, princess. Deal with it. And don't 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 drive like a dick in future. Simple as that. But no, 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 no. Oh, this this could have been terrible. This could have been awful. Yeah, well, well don't put yourself in that situation through being being a dick. Don't be reckless. You should have learnt that through your driving career, but they they let you become a Formula One driver when you were 12. You know, this. these are the lessons you need to learn in adolescence. Don't be a fucking dick. Otherwise, you get a good eye in. Right? No. They don't do that, do they? 
because he's the son of a former F1 driver. Oh, incredible, incredible. The talent that he must have because he's the son of a former Formula One driver who was pretty shit himself. Genetic talent. Anyway, let's, uh, let's have a listen to uh, just this. Let's kick us off with this one. Towards Cops, here goes Lewis Hamilton. This is where he tangled with Max Verstappen on this occasion. He was clear and he was well ahead going into Cops and he makes the move and it's clean. Hamilton. So this is where he tangled with Max Verstappen. This is where Max Verstappen cut across him, chopped across him and put himself out of the race. But on uh, lap 31 of 52, Lewis Hamilton sticks a wheel up the inside at Cops. And overtakes Lando Norris. And you keep giving the platform to Horner. Oh, everybody knows you don't stick a wheel up the inside at Cops. Okay. Is that how it works, is it? Is that what Daniel Ricciardo thought against, when he was against Alonso? About sticking wheels up inside. That I've demonstrated. But there's more to come on that as well. On to the next bit. Nice work, mate. So, this is Martin. Yeah, Lewis uh, not quite pinned up against the wall like he was earlier on. Actually, Lando ran off the track behind him uh, in the turbulent air. So, they're describing the replay of Lewis overtaking Lando Norris at Cops. Yeah, so one of the reasons is Lewis wasn't pinned up against the wall. So, that's Max pinning Lewis up against the wall as they're heading up towards Cops. So, who, who's accountable for that? Two drivers battling out, okay, and one forces one against the wall on an inside line to a corner. But they've got a right to be there. Well, you, you, you put them there, you've got to make sure you now leave them space to make it around there. That's the way it is. You can't bully them out of having to stop going around the corner that they're entitled to go around. That's the way that this sport works. But you never address that, do you? So in this race, Charles Leclerc is leading it. We were told at the start, this isn't Ferrari's race. Ferrari's race isn't Mercedes. With Mercedes, it's more with McLaren. Okay? But 33 laps into a 52-lap event, Ferrari are leading it. But, oh, it's not their race. It's not their race to win, is it? But they've got engine problems, and Leclerc's experiencing some difficulties, and... Uh, a, a boy, Ted Kravitz in the pits, is giving everybody some education. And listen to Crofty. Why he's, having to, why he's having to change it. So these engines, they have maps. It's almost like, you know, it's the computer telling the engine how to run itself. Yeah. That's what a map does. It's, it's, like, it's, like, a sat -nav for, it's like a sat-nav for the engine. Where, where yeah. do we deploy the exactly. electrical energy? It's like a sat-nav for the engine. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Talking about the engine management of... An internal combustion engine being like a sat nav for the engine. Is that how you want to kind of educate fans of the sport as to what an engine management I issue is? Fucking ridiculous. Gee, when, when is it best use? It's, it's all very complicated. And presumably, it's gone haywire by itself, and, and, and Charles Leclerc is having to reprogram his sat nav while going at 200 miles an hour while racing. Reprogram the sat nav whilst going at 200 miles an hour whilst racing. Really? Pfft, shit analogy. And what is that saying to people? Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Now I'm playing you this is because this is key with other things as well. Just just listen. Hamilton dropping back a bit for Bottas. Yeah, Bottas is blistering his front left a lot. He might come back towards us towards the end. Because there's still Martin Brundle, a long way to go in this race. Absolutely right. Absolutely right, Martin. So, that was um, McLaren talking to Norris, saying that Bottas is suffering blistering on his tyre, and therefore it, his performance drop-off What might mean that, you know, it's a potential for Norris to get Bottas eventually. Blistering to those tyres. Abu Dhabi, 2021. You get Martin Brundle say, oh, Verstappen's going to have to put in um, 20 Schumacher-esque 
qualifying laps. All right, so, so you think, Martin, you think you can tell a global audience that Max Verstappen can just bang in 20 consecutive laps, one after the other, that's like a qualifying lap. You don't have to worry about tyre management. You don't have to worry about blistering of tyres. And what about energy recovery units? How about the hybrid system whereby some laps you have to concentrate on charging that battery up so that then you can get maximum deployment for setting your faster laps. So you can't bang in 20 consecutive qualifying laps. But you tell us you can with your bullshit. Oh, 20 Schumacher-esque qualifying laps. That's what you tell us. Absolute bollocks. Uh, on that occasion, Max Verstappen can't catch Hamilton today. He's out of the race. Uh, first lap incidents at Cops where Hamilton just touched uh, the, uh, the rear of the Red Bull. Verstappen being sent into the tyre barrier. Hamilton picking up a 10 second penalty as a result. Hold on, Daniel, you're doing well, you're doing well. Keeping science at bay. Science knows all about this car that Ricardo's driving, of course, because he was in it last year. Indeed. So Leclerc, I'm surprised he's not on the radio going, Has, is the race finished? <laughs> uh, I, where are they all? Because he is so by himself out there at the moment. It's just where he would want to be, to drive nicely. And we've seen how good the Ferrari is on its race tyres this afternoon. I wonder what he is saying on the team radio. Karun Chandok, any, uh, any intel? Let us know what you think in the comments section, Karun. Um, oh, he's just out there on his own, isn't he? So at this stage in time, with 17 laps to go, and Hamilton is 13.2 seconds behind... Are they talking about Leclerc being out on the front on his own? Or are they talking about Verstappen in second needing to put in 20 Schumacher-esque qualifying laps? No, they're not. They're, they're, just, they're just talking about the guy in the lead, aren't they? They never seem to talk about the guy in the lead when we were in Abu Dhabi, when the guy in the lead was on the verge of becoming an eight-time world champion, a record-breaking eight time world champion they didn't talk about the guy that was leading the race the only thing they wanted to talk about was what the guy in second needed to do to overcome the guy in the lead but but that's not how it is here is it oh yeah he's quite comfortable out there he's quite happy performance in reserve Chandok, any uh, any intel yeah, Crofty, they, he asked, what is the pace? And the, the engineer told him, Shavi told him, 31.7, you're as quick as the Mercedes drivers. His reply, I've got plenty of margin. That is a driver very comfortable in the lead of the British Grand Prix. I have to say, fantastic recovery from Ferrari. If you think about where they were last year, guys, this is a very, very impressive performance. Or even back... Uh, uh, it's not his race, though. You know, Martin told us that at the restart. OK, he's in the lead, he's comfortable... OK, he's got pace in reserve, but it's not his race. They're only allowed to race McLarens, is what Sky Sports have told us at the restart. Oh, now that Max is not here, this is just going to be a walk in the park for Mercedes. Leclerc out front, now doing personal best still. Really is looking comfortable. Something about that... Uh... Tribute helmet that he's got this weekend, celebrating 70 years since Ferrari's first win in the Formula One World Championship. Uh, Jose Froilan Gonzalez here at Silverstone in the 1951 Grand Prix. You know how I like a little bit of symmetry? Ferrari win in 51 in Britain, Ferrari win in 2021 uh, in Britain. It's just, just something about that uh, that, as the laps go by, is looking ever more likely. Ted, to you. Yeah. I'm do we, do we get on the radio to uh, Toto Wolf uh, and see if... Uh, so it's, Toto, what is it possible for Lewis to do at this stage? Um, do we need some help from the racing gods? Do we need a miracle? Is that standard at this stage to now get on the radio to the teams and ask them, oh, how's the race going? 
How are you going to be able to overcome this de deficit? How is this going to unfold? Give us some of your insight. Hmm. We didn't get that, did we? Yes, Lewis is going to need some help from the racing gods. We're going to need a miracle because we're 12 seconds behind. And there's 15 laps to go. And Ferrari look comfortable. And you like the symmetry or some somehow symmetry of Ferrari winning 70 years previous to that. Or whatever it was. Thanks ever so much indeed, uh, as, Ted Kravitz. As we hear, that Max Verstappen has been taken to a local hospital for checkups. Not surprising the impact the G40 would have taken there. Uh, and uh, as I say, it was a, a sideways impact for good measure. Yes, that's an uh, announcement coming from the FIA uh, that it's uh, a local hospital, which I would assume. Well, St. Keynes General or Northampton? Probably Northampton would be a bit uh, closer. It was neither. But thanks for the speculation. Thanks for your bullshit. Uh, we hope that Max Verstappen uh, needs nothing more than precautionary checks and that he'll be uh, fine in a couple of... Yeah, he's just been sent there for precautionary checks. You saw him get out of the car. You saw him wave at the crowd. You saw him walking of his own accord into the back of an ambulance. OK? Seemed all right. The days to take his place in Hungary for the next race, but I tell you, if this was Paul Ricard at the start of a triple header, then Red Bull might be very worried indeed about the next races to come. They'll be looking at his teammate Sergio Perez at the moment, Martin, making a move there on Lance Stroll, almost yeah. getting it done, but not quite. You know, if Max did have concussion, they take that very, very seriously these days, isn't it? Or a cracked bone somewhere, cracked rib or something. It went in sideways, didn't it? So it's a sideways yeah. jolt there. The seat does support you very well, and the cockpit in general supports you. But Hamilton's pumping in some kind of lap right now. Oh, if he'd have got concussion, if he'd have got some sort of cracked bone. Um, yeah, he hasn't. Well, we're speculating. What do you know? The evidence was that he got out of the car, seemed to be all right. He's gone for a few checks. Let's all speculate to see how bad this could be for Max. What's that going to do? What's that going to do? How's that going to make people think when you speculate something worse than what's really happened could or may have happened when it hasn't happened? And uh, Mercedes cannot afford to let him lose a tenth of a second catching and passing Valtteri Bottas. If Valtteri is saying that he's not going to make it at this pace to the end, then they have to let, as you yeah. rightly say, Hamilton pass, because if they don't, then he's going to hold Hamilton up and Lando Norris is going to come very much back into the equation on yeah. Hamilton. Yeah, it needs to it needs to be really in the next, certainly within the next lap, if they want to come at Leclerc. Then we'll see if Leclerc was bragging about how much pace he's got left or not, but he'll be getting a hurry up soon with the kind of pace that Hamilton's got as we move into the closing stages. Well, Hamilton, well, Hamilton uh, with the fastest lap of the race of a 130.5 on the last lap. So these are 20 qualifying, Schumacher-esque qualifying laps. Hamilton with the fastest lap on lap 39. Yeah, he might just be managing things to make sure he's a bit more comfortable towards the end of the race. Perez dives into the pits again. So um, Hamilton's lap was one and a half seconds faster than the Leclerc, who might be managing a few things. Oh, they manage things or they, they can pump in 20 qualifying Schumacher-esque laps, can they? What's true? What's the truth? Can a set of soft tyres bang out 20 consecutive qualifying laps? I've never seen that happen before. Can that car continue to perform on the limit for 20 consecutive laps? Or does it need to recharge? Does it need to recharge the battery to extract the maximum pace out of the car? Hmm. Let me know what you think in the comments section. All of you experts that know exactly how these cars perform. Or are misguided by the misguided fucking information that these cunts lying to you give to you. 
So more from the hype job, lap 40 of 52. We're talking about Hamilton now gaining on Bottas. And Bottas, because he's struggling with blistering on his tyres, allowing Hamilton to pass him to give Hamilton the chance of attacking the lead car. But Crofty has something to say, as always. Where, where, where can Valtteri allow Lewis past, crucially for him, without losing too much time on the track? Uh, oh, where, crucially for Bottas. Oh, look, OK, who's behind you then, Bottas? Oh, that'd be Lando Norris. How far back is he? Oh, well, you're eight seconds behind the leader. Norris is 18 seconds behind the leader. So, you know, the difference in between Bottas and Norris is about 10 seconds. Oh, crucially, crucially. Uh, no, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's not that crucial, is it? It's all fairly comfortable. Um, well, he's come to the head of Norris, isn't he? Come... Absolutely right, Martin. But, but Crofty there will hype it up. Oh, 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 could he lose some time here? Yeah, it's not really a problem. Not a problem. You know, it is a, it's a second or a third. Here we go. Okay, okay Valtteri. We invert the cars into turn 15 this lap. So, there we are. Lewis Hamilton now up to second place. 8.8 .8 seconds behind with 12 laps remaining. Now, let's have a look over here. We'll see what sort of lap times that Lewis starts putting in shortly. Might even have been a lap late that one, but now the hunt is on. This is it. In the closing stages. He was a second faster than Charles Leclerc on the last lap. He was a second and a half faster on the lap previously. He's now got nice clean air and a free track to chase after Charles Leclerc. 11 laps to go. The gap, 8.3 seconds. So, a clean track to get after him. Didn't have any lapped cars in between him and the leader. You know, didn't have any lapped cars that he had to make his way through. But then we're told that actually the lapped cars can be good for you because you get some DRS. So that's good. So it's good that you get nothing. It's good that you've got a free track. But it's also good if you haven't got a free track because you can get some DRS. So, so which, what's good and what's not? What was which one's better? Can you tell us, or, or or are both good? You're just gonna tell us. Oh, it's good because he's got a free track. Oh, it's good because he's got lap cars that's gonna give him some DRS. Everything's good. Amazing. And you know what it's like in the grandstands here. You know, there'll be a buzz. There'll be a chatter. The fans will be talking about it. They'll know that Hamilton's got half a chance here, and when they know, they'll start to show their encouragement. Oh, well, the, the fans know something about the sport. Right? So they know that when you're, well, some of us know when you're full of shit and lying to us. And when Hamilton gets the chance, they'll show their encouragement. What? Because it's the British Grand Prix. You know, the British Grand Prix, where we want a British driver, most of us that aren't racist fuckers, want a British man to win the British Grand Prix. Because that's the guy we support. Yeah? So the driver's on the track. Yeah, Leclerc said that he had some pace in his pocket. He needs to deliver it right now. He's got to get on with it now. And uh, Ted's got a line for us. A... And on the last lap, Lewis Hamilton set the fastest lap of the race. Charles Leclerc Martin put in his best lap of the race, but it was still a second slower. Yeah. How slow, wasn't it? Leclerc's tyres two laps younger. To remind you, Hamilton pitted 27. Leclerc pitted lap 29. He's still in free air, is Leclerc. He will be uh, towards the end of the Grand Prix catching a pack that's Raikkonen, Sonoda, Perez, Russell, Giovinazzi, and Latifi. As we watch Daniel Ricciardo and the other Ferrari of Carlos Sainz, fifth and sixth at the moment, Charles Leclerc then. Now he's given the freedom to push to the end. Uh, can he keep going at the pace that he needs? Can Hamilton keep up this pace, Martin, crucially, without blistering his tyres? Yeah, that's key, isn't it? And um, it's been, the, the Ferraris look better on. I thought you could do um, 20 Schumacher-esque qualifying laps. That's what they, uh, 
seemed to hint was possible or would be required of Max Verstappen at the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix when they were narrating the script for that event. Leclerc another personal best, so it's a straight duel now. And I think what Hamilton did on that last lap, Martin, was just to charge up the battery pack a little bit more to go for a real fast push lap this time around because he's gone fastest in the first sector. Mm -hmm. Really? You think he just eased off a bit to charge the battery pack up? Yeah? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But Cameron, F1, would tell you that on that final illegal lap, it, well, he wouldn't have told you it's illegal, but on that final illegal lap in Abu Dhabi, Lewis Hamilton was clipping. He was clipping. Yeah, but was he charging his battery up to try and get maximum deployment of energy down the straight that he was going to be most vulnerable under? Oh, I wonder. Let me know what you think in the comments section, you thick fuck. Hamilton then another second a lap faster than Leclerc with the fastest lap of the race and a world championship point at the moment for that. With Max Verstappen out of this race, how precious could a win and a fastest lap be for Lewis Hamilton? It won't give him the championship lead uh, here this evening, but that 33-point advantage uh, that Max had going into this race will be cut down to just seven points going to the next race in Hungary. And Red Bull will go mad when they think Hamilton should have had a much bigger penalty uh, for that contact. Red Bull will go mad. They think Hamilton should have had a much bigger penalty. We're still talking about it. We're still talking about it. Let us all think about what Red Bull think. That's their point of view. Helmet Marco saying that Hamilton should be suspended for a race after that accident when he picked up a 10. That's at least the second time you've uh, presented that notion about how much Marco thinking Hamilton should have a race suspension. Keep conditioning the viewers with the malice. Second penalty. Hamilton's gains in the last few laps. 1.1 second, 1.1 second, 1.1 second as Perez. Oh, Raikkonen just has to bail out of that one. 20 Schumacher S qualifying lap that only Max Verstappen is capable of at Abu Dhabi 2021. When he wasn't. Seven seconds. But Max is the greatest we've ever seen. Seconds and one second. Gap to Claire now 5.0. That's another fastest lap. And look at that. Yes, you can, mate. <laughs> yes, you definitely can, says Bono. 4.1 seconds is that gap. Now, four seconds is that gap. Now, we're on lap 45. Sergio Perez is hunting down Kimi Raikkonen. Lewis Hamilton is hunting down a win, a potential win here at Silverstone, which would be his eighth. Oh, three purples again. Three purples. Would that be another fastest lap from Lewis Hamilton on, uh, well, on what would have been lap 45 at the time? Grand Prix victory here. There's a group of back markers that may interact towards the end of this race, mate. Make the most of it. They're the ones I was talking about, and Lewis can now see the Ferrari easily. He's closed the gap down with yet another fastest lap, nine tenths faster than his rival, and now he can see the prey. And the fans can sense what's going on because you can start to hear them now the cheers, the air horns, whatever. Leclerc and then Hamilton uh, flat. Funny that, that uh, fans of Lewis Hamilton at his home Grand Prix, British fans of a British driver at the British Grand Prix um, want Lewis Hamilton to win. I'm not really interested in your pro Max Verstappen fluffing, your boosting of this young, reckless Dutch guy that's a bit of a prick. We're not interested in that. We're not interested in that. Read the room. Read the room. Flashed by, it is Hamilton, hammer time, very much so at Silverstone, and he has put the hammer down, has Lewis Hamilton. What can Charles Leclerc do to defend against him? I said be patient, 
I knew we'd get some excitement here at Silverstone, but what a dramatic conclusion we could get. Dramatic start, dramatic conclusion, Martin. Who's your money on now? Well, clearly the Mercedes is faster uh, in this stage on those tyres. Uh, but as we saw earlier on in the Grand Prix, when we expected Lewis to breeze past the Ferrari, given their relative paces, you know... Oh, clearly the Mercedes is faster at this stage on those tyres. What, on the same compound of tyres that have just done, what, actually, more laps? <laughs> Oh, so he's on 18 lap hard tyres compared to Leclerc's 16 lap old hard tyres. Clearly the Mercedes is faster on those those tyres. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks, thanks for the valuable insight again. You know, as soon as he got in the turbulent air, he started to struggle a little bit, didn't he? Oh. So that, that's Leclerc's best chance now. But they do have these back markers looming up. And all this after the 10-second penalty for causing a collision. Without that, well, Lewis Hamilton, you would imagine, uh, would have been clear as Charles Leclerc. Who is your driver of the day? Leclerc is winning that at the moment comfortably, and I'm not surprised. Lewis. So, remember, Lewis started second in the race. He was driven into by Max Verstappen. And in recovering from being driven into, he was dropped down to, he lost the place to Leclerc, right? So somebody crashing into him made him lose a place in that race. He was then given a 10-second penalty, which he shouldn't have had, okay? And he's had to fight back from that. This is right front tyre is blistered quite badly. Is that because he's just pushed that bit too hard? He had nothing to lose by doing so. He's picking out the pace, right? Lewis, you are looking strong, mate. Just keep it up. Interesting. You're picking up the pace. Hamilton was still a second faster on that last lap, lap 45 of the, uh, 46 of this race. And Leclerc was a second faster. The man who's led every single lap of this race today. What's Hamilton got left? Normally here at Silverstone, Martin, plenty. Yeah, it's uh, just keep an eye on that right front tyre of his in terms of how that's going to be full. Well, what's all that? When uh, Horner was on the radio asking for his miracle uh, in Abu Dhabi 2021, did Max Verstappen look to be making gains on Lewis Hamilton? 12 seconds behind, gap had stabilised. Wasn't lapping any faster. Wasn't looking like he was capable of lapping any faster. Was he closing in on Lewis Hamilton in the same way that Lewis Hamilton is closing in on Charles Leclerc here? No, 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 he wasn't, was he? He wasn't. But we get all the drama there, don't we? We get all the hype and the speculation from the commentary team there. Bit strange, really, isn't it? Bit strange. Dust up there, something must have gone a little bit wide. I would imagine one of those uh, six cars, those back markers that yeah. you've been referring to, is just a, a yeah. dip to wheel at Brooklands. Now, this is going to be key how quickly they get out of the way, how quickly Leclerc can navigate the back markers. He's going into Beckett's as they're leaving Beckett's. The how quickly they get out of the way. Right now, here's the difference, Martin. It's not about getting back markers out of the way. When you're racing, and the leaders come up behind you, then, yeah, you're obliged to not impede the leaders. Hence, you are displayed blue flags, OK, and are not allowed to impede the leaders. When the safety car is deployed, the race is neutralised. Before the, the race can resume, you have to achieve valid restart conditions, and that concerns ensuring that the race order is correct and all of the advantages that had been built up had been nullified. You don't go racing with lap cars in situ. That's not been allowed since the start of the 2012 season when the regulations changed. But you continually lie to fans going, oh, are they going to get out the way of the leaders? It's nothing to do with that. You're lying. You never have told the truth about that. Most of the world, most of the population that watches the sport of Formula One does not understand that. The reason they don't understand that is because they get their information from you. They think you're telling the truth and you're lying.
you. Yeah, this is where we miss the crowd. Every time Hamilton comes past, they're on their feet screaming. The flags are out. Go, Hamilton. It's Hammer Time 44. Arise, Sir Hamilton. I can see in front of me, they're cheering him on. Can he make it? 140,000 behind the Mercedes driver. That's surprising, isn't it? It's surprising that 140,000 people are supporting our greatest ever Formula One driver. That when he wins this, wins his 99th Grand Prix. He's already a seven-time world champion, seeking a record-breaking eighth world championship. Funny that the people that have rocked up to Silverstone, the majority of those will be there to support Sir Lewis Hamilton. Not you, though, Sky Sports. Not you, the sports broadcaster with British commentators. You're being paid to promote Max Verstappen and Red Bull and tell us what Red Bull think. Funny that, isn't it? Funny whose interests you represent. And Hamilton got past his teammate Valtteri Bottas. It's now a second as we head towards Cops, where Hamilton had that collision with Max Verstappen, and he's now keep reminding us. Keep reminding us. Oh, um, you know it was crucial for Valtteri Bottas to not lose much time when um, when he allowed Lewis Hamilton through. Oh, it's going to be crucial. Um, yeah, um, Norris is fifteen seconds behind Bottas. Crucial. Second, as we head towards Cops, where Hamilton had that collision with Max Verstappen, and he's now trying to chase after Charles Leclerc to get the lead back. And Leclerc then, uh, Latifi lives right off on the exit of Cops' corner. Leclerc clears that one nicely. They both do. I say get the lead back. To get the lead that he was trying to get when he had the collision with Max Verstappen. Now he's got DRS. Oh, that collision with Max Verstappen again. That collision with Max Verstappen. That collision with Max Verstappen. Um, say it enough times. Tell people enough times. So, for another six miles an hour, extra pace or so, down the hangar straight, Lewis Hamilton closes to half a second behind Charles Leclerc. As much as I'm loving standing in the grandstand, Martin, can you imagine what it's like? Uh, so in the commentary box, can you imagine what it's like in the grandstands at the moment? Standing amongst the British fans, denied. Well, you can see, can't you? Surely you can see. Their chance to come and see their Grand Prix last year. 140,000 plus are here at Silverstone this afternoon. They are being given a proper British Grand Prix treat here. Three to go. And he's moving in quickly, but here are those back markers I've been talking about. Three to go, but, you know, if you've not gained the lead on the first lap, then, um, you know, that's your race over. The other driver just runs off into the sunset with it. You know, that's why Lewis was so desperate to get the job done on the first lap, uh, because otherwise his strategy would have meant that he wa it wasn't possible for him to win. Isn't that what you told us back? when you tried to make out that Lewis Hamilton was so desperate on that first lap to make that move stick, because otherwise he wouldn't have had any chance of winning whatsoever. Well, and of course that then destabilises the Ferrari a little bit for good measure. What it will do is give him a bit of DRS though when he catches the back markers. It'll give Leclerc the chance to open his rear wing, but it will also for Hamilton too. Uh, meanwhile, Sergio Perez has pitted for a change of tyres to put on the soft tyre to steal the fastest lap point from Lewis Hamilton. But he won't, will he? He's not in the top ten. No, but he'll stop Hamilton getting it. He won't get a point yeah. for it, but he'll steal that point I'm with you. Uh, from Perez. Right. Ah, so this is what Red Bull do. Operate as a team. You've got Max Verstappen's rear gunner. So even though Max is out of the race and Perez isn't going to get any points because he's down in 16th, they pit him to make sure he gets the fastest lap of the race just to ensure that Lewis Hamilton doesn't get it. Perez will get nothing out of this. Because he's not in the top 10, he won't get a point for getting the top for, for getting the fastest lap. But what he'll do is de he'll deprive anybody else of getting that point. Who the current holder of that is Lewis Hamilton. That's what Red Bull have done. That's 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 fine. 
But what you've got to understand is it's the dynamic. We're to oh, it's Supermax. No, it's not Supermax. It's the whole enterprise geared up to promote him, to work for him. He's not doing it of his own accord. <laughs> Remember what happened at Cops on lap one. Here goes Hamilton on lap 50. Oh, and he tries to get past Leclerc and goes off the track. Has Hamilton gone through? Yes, he has. He's into the lead by the time they get into Maggots. It was almost another Cops collision, but Hamilton has put his Mercedes into the lead. Charles Leclerc's left. Remember what happened on lap one? It was almost another Cops collision. Well, it's, it's not really, is it? Hamilton's just gone up the inside. Leclerc's run wide. Leclerc's afforded him some space and he's ran wide. And so, uh, Hamilton went up the inside on Norris on about lap 31. Did the overtake there as well. I thought, I thought according to Christian, everybody knows you don't put a wheel up the inside at Cops Corner. Well, who's everybody, Christian? Because we can go back through the years and look at the greats of the sport and seeing them do overtaking manoeuvres at Cops Corner. Who's lying? Knowing that you are lying, why is the broadcaster affording you a platform to project that message to the world? To incite the hatred? To give it people disinformation? To misinform people with vitriolic message to vilify a man? To create hatred? which is going to cause online abuse, online toxicity, racial abuse. But wear your badge to say hate won't win. Put your little hashtag up saying against online abuse that you fuckers have caused. He's into the lead. Charles Leclerc has led every single lap of this race. Oh, Charles Leclerc has led every single lap of this race. Um, yeah, because you know what? That statistic, number of laps led, what does that mean? Fuck all. Okay, absolutely fuck all. Oh, he fully deserved to win the British Grand Prix because he led the most amount of laps. Oh, did he win the British Grand Prix? Uh, no. Why didn't he win the British Grand Prix? Because um, a car beat him. A car did what the requirements of winning is, which is finishing that race distance in first position. You don't have to lead every lap. Leading every lap doesn't achieve anything. The only thing that, it, 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 that that's actually tangible, that's relevant, is the requirement to cross that finishing line first. Does it mean cross that point on the track in the lead for... 50 of those 52 laps means means nothing, does it? Well done you. Okay, you come second. Well done you. You fully deserve to come second because the guy that beat you, beat you. There you go. But on lap 50, he's now settling for second spot and Hamilton gives the British fans some British cheer. Well, there's the answer that did that contact with Verstappen upset Hamilton. He's been up the inside there twice more this afternoon. This one was pretty punchy. Well, look at this. This one was pretty punchy. And then listen to what he says. How close were we to another cops collision? Hamilton was behind. Another cops collision. Leclerc ran wide and then just got onto a bit of AstroTurf, a, a bit of dirty stuff, and yeah. had to move out of it. Hamilton had lifted out of it. Oh, this one's pretty pretty punchy. Oh, Hamilton has lifted out of it. <laughs> so is it pretty punchy or had Hamilton lifted out of it? Because they're two fucking opposite things. What's true? Oh, this was pretty punchy. Oh, he, he lifted out of it. And the other guy just ran wide. Who's punchy? How are you trying to project somebody? Hey? But unfortunately, as Charles is busy focusing a, a part of his energy on the... But unfortunately, but unfortunately, we have just seen a British driver fight back and take the lead of the British Grand Prix with about a lap and a half to go. 
And you said, but unfortunately, that's incredible. That's what everybody that's there paying their money, everybody in Britain that is paying to watch Sky Sports cover this race, they want to see Lewis Hamilton do that. Oh, but unfortunately... Mercedes, he's run wide. Oh, see, even, even Tom Cruise behind the mask and the glasses, I'm sure, is elated with what he's just seen there. Remember 1987? Mansell led the final three laps. He caught past Nelson Piquet from 28 seconds behind. Hamilton has done something similar today, a penalty that could well have ruined his race. Well, it's invigorated him, and he's leading. Just keep it easy on the curbs. Easy on the curbs. Nicky two point mate. Yeah, and okay. now... Hamilton breathing heavily as he... Loose. Just look after it. Yeah, leave me to it, man. That heavy breathing is because he's working hard. He's on the limit. He's sustaining that limit, OK? Working as hard as he can because he's had to do that through hard work, hard, sustained driving. OK, you don't, you don't convey that to the fans. You don't explain to fans what it is it takes to pump in lap after lap after lap in the manner that he has just done. Well, now they tell him to keep off the curbs because he's got the lead. And the last thing they want, Martin, is to keep on the curbs and risk those tyres having problems. Yeah, and the front left was just beginning to open up as well. But Charles Leclerc had led every single lap. Wow! Charles Leclerc had led every single lap. Well, he led lap one because he got through when Max hit Lewis Hamilton. And then he's led since then. Partly because Lewis Hamilton had then been given a 10-second penalty. And also, that Ferrari was a decent race car. They, they were, you know, it wasn't that Mercedes weren't their race. It wasn't that Ferrari could only race against McLaren at the Silverstone Grand Prix. They were trying to win it too, strangely enough. Strange that you'd enter a Grand Prix and attempt to win it and just go, oh, no, 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 that's not our race. That's not our race. We won't race with those. We won't try to beat those. We'll just let them win. You know, we'll just let Red Bull win. OK, that's not our race. Our race is for eighth position. We'll not bother about trying to get anywhere higher than eighth. We'll just bother with eighth because that's their race. This is our race. Why bother competing if you don't have the aspiration to win something? Today, but it won't be the right ones. No. Up until that point, up until cops. But what? Well, he's led every single lap of this race, but it won't be the right ones. <laughs> well, funny that, isn't it? Funny that. What a race he has put in, Charles Leclerc. What a magnificent first stint it was. He just didn't have the pace to keep the Mercedes at bay right the way to the end, and Hamilton now set free. To keep the Mercedes at bay, or to keep Lewis Hamilton. He kept um, Valtteri Bottas at bay. Or was it Lewis Hamilton? He is over two seconds clear and down the Hamilton straight, leading the British Grand Prix for one final lap. Yeah, he didn't lead any of the sprint race. He's led very little of the... Didn't lead any of the sprint race. Why was that? Because it's a sprint race where the points on offer were three points, two points, one point. You're not going to risk being collided into by a fucking maniac, right, in that sprint race, putting you out of it, meaning you started in 20th, or even with a damaged car, affecting your chances in the main event, the Grand Prix, where 25 points are up for grabs. He didn't lead any of them laps. He didn't need to lead any of those laps. He was content in doing a damage limitation job, bringing it home in second, just a one-point deficit on that event, but making sure his chances for the Grand Prix weren't impacted by that. Starting that Grand Prix in second position. Not really a problem, is it? This race is Lewis. They nearly led, didn't he, up against Max. Uh, but when it matters, after 69 laps of racing, he'll be out front. And Perez does indeed steal that. Well, stops Lewis scoring the point rather. There you go, Perez. Getting a point. Perez puts in the fastest lap of the race, preventing Lewis Hamilton from getting that point. How do Red Bull use their team, their drivers?
but Perez down in 16th. Doesn't get a point for it himself, but prevents Hamilton from getting that fastest lap. For himself. So. Oh, oh, and it's another Grand Slam. It's another Triple Crown for the Red Bull car. Well, because, like, who else, who else does that? Actually, we're doing nothing, but let's stop Max Verstappen getting the fastest lap of the race. Nobody does that. Only Red Bull. Yeah? We can't get anything out of it, but we'll stop them. Oh, no, that's not our race. Senna at Imola, Schumacher at Suzuka, Lewis Hamilton himself in Melbourne. Eight victories at a single circuit. He is about to add to that, and he is already getting the standing ovation from the British crowd. You saw the table a few moments ago. The 33-point gap that Max Verstappen had going into this race is now down to seven points in the championship as we head to round 11. Hungry in a couple of weeks' time. I don't know about you, I am hungry for more action like this. They're hungry for more. 33 points and he's now got 25. That's eight points different action like this what a british grand prix weekend it's been your cheers you can hear for tens of miles around when hamilton won qualifying on friday evening it was a victory that energized and reinvigorated him he went into battle with max verstappen verstappen came off second best i hope he's okay and i hope there's nothing i hope he's okay oh oh we're still really concerned about the damage to max verstappen too serious as he went to hospital for precautionary checks but Hamilton has picked up the I hope it's not too serious for Max Verstappen no 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 we've established that it's not really that bad is it this is Lewis Hamilton's moments of glory since the restart he's chased down the prancing horse he chases the check and flag he wins the British Grand Prix for an eighth time here at Silverstone and Hamilton is back in the championship hunt don't you forget it Charles Leclerc comes home to take second place Valtteri Bottas a podium for him third place with his tyres struggling at the end I hope the crowd give a massive ovation for Lando Norris as well after a hugely difficult week for him. He is going to come home to take fourth in the British Grand Prix on a mega day for McLaren. Fourth and fifth for Norris and for Ricardo, who's had to hold off the other Ferrari of Carlos Sainz. We'll talk about the minor points in a few moments, but talk about this moment, Martin Brundle. Hamilton wins at Silverstone again. They had to work hard for that one. So, he's just won. Record equal the eighth time he's won it. Seven-time world champion. 99 Grand Prix wins. Palace Martin. It'll be a controversial one as we move into the evening with all sorts of opinions on that contact with Max. Right. You're not saying what a great drive it was. You're saying it's gonna, you're, you're going to focus on the fact that this is a controversial one. What a great drive that was. An unnecessary penalty. Getting bunted down to second position because the other driver ran into him. And he came back and still won. This is a controversial one. Tell us more, Martin. Verstappen on the first lap. The stewards, as I pointed out earlier on, gave him the, the second most lenient penalty. Oh, he got the second most lenient penalty. The stewards gave him the second most lenient penalty. Look at the narrative. Look how you project this. With a 10 seconds that he's pit stop. And he that he shouldn't have had because he wasn't at fault. Max Verstappen should have been the one penalised for that. He was able to recover that. Leclerc nursing a few engine issues. Drove beautifully. But we know that the Ferrari is not quite as fast as the Mercedes. Leclerc drove beautifully. What about Lewis's driving? Mercedes, but didn't it look after its tyres? The Mercedes. Well, and didn't they do a great job? Yes! Get in there, Lewis, man. What an amazing drive. An amazing day. Hats off to you there, mate. That was just epic. Absolutely. Just first. You fully deserved it, Max. You fully deserved it. You had no luck. You had no luck all season. You fully deserved it. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Class. This is James. Well, I'll make fantastic drive. And that. What a great job, guys. 
this goes to everyone back at the team and the factories. Thank you so much for continuing to push this year. I'm so inspired by you guys. There's a long way to go, but let's keep pushing, guys. I believe in you. Thank you. Well done, mate. We believe in you too. Yeah, we can do this. Flying the flag and another victory for Lewis Hamilton. Well, you couldn't get a ticket for this race, I would imagine, Martin Brundle. For the majority of this crowd, they'll consider it money well spent to see these seats. Strictly speaking, you're not supposed to unnecessarily leave the racetrack, but I can't imagine. <laughs> oh, Lewis is leaving the racetrack to drive closer to the crowd with the Union flag flying. Thanks for uh, telling us. Well, the thing is, Martin, you've never done that because you've never won. So, you know, you wouldn't know what it feels like to win the British Grand Prix and therefore want to interact with the crowd that spend hundreds of pounds each to come and support you and you don't want to go and repay them and show your appreciation and support for them. You just want, oh, oh, oh he's doing something that's not very nice. Oh, oh they, should, they should tell him off for that. They should give him a penalty for that. That'll be uh, too much on the stewards' minds. Dr. Helmut Marco saying he needed a race suspension for what happened. Lewis. Dr. Helmut Marco saying he needed a race suspension. You still have to keep banging on about that, don't you, Crofty? When do they stop? The guy has just won the British Grand Prix and you say Dr. Helmut Marco thinks that he should have got a race suspension for that. That's at least the third time you said a race suspension. The third time you have presented that toxic toxicity. Who is paying you to say that? That is disgusting. We never give up. We never give up. This is still on. Damn right. Toto, damn right. Must have been helped from the racing gods. Yeah? The miracle. I want to say a big thank you to all the fans here. Woo! Couldn't do it without you guys. Well, they might have heard that on the circuit commentary if they've got their sky go in their hands and their, uh, their mobile devices as well. But he does believe in the energy he gets from the fans here at Silverstone. He talks about it a lot. And had a very good look at the conveyor belt that uh, <laughs> Max Verstappen ended up in there, didn't he? Lewis Hamilton has just won. Now you're talking about the conveyor belt that Max Verstappen ended up in. He got, a, he got a penalty, Martin. The Stewart yeah. decided that, that he was at fault for it. If you give more severe penalties, do you then stop the drivers going for moves? Like so, so we're talking now about the severity of the penalty and trying to bring that up as a debate. Like that, we want to see drivers racing and going for it. Nothing stupid, but at the end of the day, if, if you penalise too hard, they're not going to go for it in the future, and then we don't get the action. No, I agree. I, I called it a racing incident yeah. by now. I called it a racing incident, but the stewards gave him the second most lenient penalty. You call it a racing incident, so you, if you're authentic, you say, so if it's a racing incident, there should be no penalty whatsoever. What are they even doing giving him a penalty for something that is actually being nice to match Verstappen, a racing incident, when really... It's a crash that was caused by Max Verstappen. His fault. He's the one that's at fault. He's the one that should be receiving a penalty. Oh, I called it a racing incident, but the stewards, they gave Lewis the second most lenient penalty for that. Is that right? Is that a congruent way of explaining that situation to viewers and telling people this is the situation that penalty shouldn't have happened. Oh, you'll all have your own opinions on this. Let me know what you think in the comments section when we just trigger off the war. Clickety clip. Advertising revenue. Filthy bastards. And large touch and go, I thought. And it depends on what other information you've got available in the steward's office. And yeah. It depends what other information you've got available in the steward's office, such as the video replays of the incident, which you can slow down to frame by frames in the same way that I've done and showed you that the, the impact was 
before the curb and shows you Max Verstappen's on board with his steering inputs and the fact that he chopped to cross the line that Lewis Hamilton was on. And you can quite clearly identify who the culprit is for that crash. That's the information available to the stewards. But they tell us, oh, we're going to introduce VAR. We're going to introduce VAR, you know, where, you know, we can look at a car's online footage, see that it's um, jumped the start, see that it's like gone and, you know, driven half a metre forward out of its um, grid box before the lights go, which means that that's a penalty. And using our video assistant refereeing, our stewards can, can, can penalise that driver or say, actually, even though the rules of the sport say that Norris should have been penalised yesterday in Saudi Arabia, somehow say, oh, yeah, no, no, we're not going to we're not going to penalise Norris for that. Why? The rules say you should. Hmm. What, what Do we have stewards that aren't capable of stewarding? Why would you make a decision that's not in accordance with the rules of the sport? It's not a judgment call. It's quite clear, factual information. Did this happen? Yes or no? Yes, it did. Well, that equals a penalty. Quite a simple person. Oh, we'll choose not to give them a penalty. Why would you do that? Why would you make those choices? Choices which impact the result of a so-called sport. A human decision where you've broken the rules. So it is a clear rule break. This is not a judgment call. It's not judging whether or not he did it because he did it. Oh, we judge that he it didn't to get a penalty. No, no, the rules state that if you do that, you get a penalty. Oh, um, yeah, but we didn't want to. <laughs> Absolute madness. And they got a lot. Um, so they didn't give him a particularly massive penalty and he's overcome it. But they didn't give him a particularly massive penalty for something that, that even you would judge as a racing incident. Even you, a Max Verstappen fluffer, right, doesn't think he should have had a penalty because it's a racing incident and he didn't get a particularly massive penalty. Red Bull will be furious. They've got a wrecked car and a bruised driver and no world championship points. Lewis Hamilton has just won the British Grand Prix with an incredible drive coming back from adversity. Red Bull will be furious. They've got a wrecked car and a bruised driver. Let me know if you give a fuck whether Red Bull have got a wrecked car and a bruised driver. I don't. I've just witnessed a driver coming back from adversity. A British driver winning the British Grand Prix. Do we give a fuck about Red Bull? What are you talking about Red Bull? The only thing they could do in the end was salvage a one point reduction in the Mercedes tally uh, for this afternoon by taking that fastest lap. Now Silverstone has not seen scenes like this for quite some time. And it's hugely emotional after the year and a bit that we've all had to see Silverstone given pilot status to bring fans back to a sporting venue. The weather turned out, the fans turned out. Lewis Hamilton turned out all right for him too. Silverstone in 2021. We're not going to forget this one in a hurry. Indeed, we are not. There were still some more to come, but that will do for this one. We'll have a little video of uh, Hamilton overtaking Norris at Cops and then Hamilton overtaking Leclerc at Cops and uh, seeing if that corresponds to Christian Horner uh, telling us that everybody knows you don't put a wheel up the inside at Cops. And that message that was broadcast to a global audience to condition a global, global audience of that opinion. The hatred. The narrative. The sport so-called sport is a shit show the entire thing is corrupt the governing body is corrupt it's corrupt for a pro red bull agenda a pro max verstappen agenda the whole thing is toxic and needs bringing down anyway that'll eventually happen we'll get there and i'll get back onto abu dhabi soon but this is just another example of what is truly going on in this shit show
anyway thank you for your time and uh, i will be putting some more out hopefully later on either today or later this week cheers <laughs>